I am thrilled at the opportunity to finally play a match that is not in my bathroom. Griffin Newman versus Josh Horowitz, round number two in New York, in Brooklyn. Both New York gentlemen, both undefeated in the undercard. I've got pants. I still have pants that I own, so I can, I can put them on. Sure, why not? I want to get back out there. I want to get into the field. I want to be playing people. I R L. And I'm glad that the Schmodown is coming to us to let us both play home field advantage in the city that we know. If you have an opportunity to get to that match in Brooklyn on October 9th during Comic-Con weekend, get there at SchmodownLive.com. God, Mark Ellis, what a match it is, and this isn't pay-per-view. This is for everybody. It is the Inner Geekdom Championship of the World. The champion, Mike the Killer Kalinowski, the three-time IG champ, going up against the former champion, Chandru the Chosen, Don Dapani. What a match it is. We are on Hollywood Boulevard where stars are made. The world famous Hollywood Boulevard and the intergalactically famous Scum and Villainy Cantina. And I don't know if you saw this, Chris. If you go outside and you just look yay into the hills, you see a big sign that says Hollywood because that's where the stars go. That's where the best of the best are. And we happen to have two of them competing in this inner geekdom match. It is Chandru, whose nickname is Chosen. Mike, whose nickname is The Killer. With those two nicknames, you'd think they're pretty good at answering questions. They're pretty damn good, but they're is no love lost between these two guys all the way back from last season where there was supposed to be a match between these two it didn't happen mike went into the ig tournament uh instead and wound up going all the way to the finals chandrew wound up beating kevin smets to take the title and and he became the became the first guy to defend the title since jason inman and then lost that title to mara kanopic and mike kalinowski took that title off of mara kanopic and here we are. There's been a lot of smack talk, mostly from Chandru Dondapani, and it has been on social media, going after the legends of the game in, in, the, in the process of doing it, going after Mike, going after everyone, seeing that kind of reaction. I'm hearing that kind of reaction from everybody in the crowd. They're not happy with what Chandru did, but what he did do, he got people very interested to see what's going to go on between these two guys tonight. And none of it would matter if he wasn't a great player in his own right, right. which he has proven. He's one of the best the Inner Geekdom's ever seen, and he's going up against Mike Kalinowski, who is an absolute legend. If the Inner Geekdom has a Mount Rushmore, I think Mike might have at least one visage on there, maybe two. One with normal Mike and one maybe give him some, I don't know, frosted blonde tips. Well, Mike... <laughs> Mike Kalinowski is looking to do what only Chandru Dandapani and Jason Inman had done before him, and that's defend the championship. Chandru is trying to do what both Mike Kalinowski and Mara Kanopic have done, and that's win the championship twice. This is a battle of the elite of the IG because the winner of this will go on to defend the championship against Amaru Moses, who won his contendership at Collision. But this is something, this is one of the most anticipated IG matches we've ever had. I can't wait. As a fan of this thing, I can't wait to see. And there's so much smack talk leading up to this. You, just, uh, you just come up with that contendership? So that's a $10 work. Yeah, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't even know what I said. I, it was great. He blacked out for a minute. We'll let him recover while we look at this killer promo. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody in the geekdom, we're coming for you, all right? I'm looking at you, KO. I'm looking at you, Kalinowski. And when we're done with you, we're going on to Smets, baby. 
Remember in season 7 when Mike had the chance to play me and then just give up? Chandru and Mike were going to play and Mike was like, I'm, I'm, I'm done with IG. I just don't want to play anymore. And it wasn't because he was scared of Chandru. He didn't want to play anymore. Well, there's no running from me now, Mikey. Just by being a one division player, I've beaten the last two people to have beaten Mike in IG. So if he wants to keep running his mouth, I'm happy to listen, but I'm not going to respond every time uh, because he's not worth my time at this point. You see his energy for it and you see his cockiness, but it's working for him. Whatever he's doing right now, he looks unstoppable. I'm happy to climb my way up to the belt again, to take this belt back. If I have to beat Mike, so be it. We've been circling each other for so long. Jesus, are you freaking kidding me? This, this guy is still going on. Chandra is, Chandra what? is still talking on Twitter. Still? Still, look. Oh yes. Every damn day now. I know. You know what, when I don't say anything, the fans notice. I'm gonna say something, that's it. I'm done with this crap, no more. Let me stop you right there. Mike is just an old relic. It's time for young blood to take over. He might be thinking more about that than about the game in front of him. Every time you take the belt, you drop it just as quick. Never defended that belt. <laughs> and hey, that's an argument, and now that's my goal. I gotta yeah. defend this belt. Guess what, my friend? I've been talking a lot of crap. Saying stuff behind my back, going behind my back to get title shots. He's put himself in a corner. He has solidified himself as the Conor McGregor of this game. He can be deadly in any match, but if you lose, hopefully your ass can cash the check that your mouth wrote. The running is done, and the bill always comes due. Because guess what? I'm coming for that thick, thick bet. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Come and get some. Hey everybody, Christian Harloff here, and summer is almost over, but it doesn't have to be just yet, because as it winds down, one thing you don't have to really worry about is what am I going to cook? What am I going to cook? Oh man, I got to cook some stuff up. You don't have to do that, because I'm going to give you some great stuff to cook, because Butcher Box, Butcher Box is awesome. You heard me talk about it before, and I'm going to talk about it again. Whenever you need a great tasting meal that you can trust, Butcher Box, it's there. It's got you covered. It delivers humanely sourced meat of your choosing and it puts it right at your doorstep. You get options like 100% grass fed and finished beef, free range organic chicken, humanely raised pork, wild caught lobster tails, sign me up again, wild caught Alaskan salmon, and sugar nitrate free bacon. Each box has nine to 11 pounds of meat, which is packed fresh, shipped frozen, and vacuum sealed. Luckily, today's sponsor, ButcherBox, they're doing something pretty great. Listen to this. When you guys sign up today, ButcherBox is going to give you, ready for it, free chicken, free burgers, and hot dogs in your first box. And if you don't want the hot dogs, send them to me. It's very simple to sign up. You choose your box, what you want, and the delivery frequency. They offer five boxes, four curated box options, as well as the popular custom box. Butcher Box ships your order frozen at the peak freshness and packed it in an eco friendly 100% recyclable box. You enjoy great tasting, high quality meat, and it's delivered right at your door. I mean, the second I got this thing, I was, it, I felt like Christmas. I get all these different uh, chickens and, and meats, and, and I'm getting creative with it. I, I was, had so much fun when I was defrosting it and putting the, the marinade on it. And then it, it, I'm telling you, the quality of the meat is fantastic. Butcher Box wants you to enjoy the rest of the summer with this special deal. Butcher Box has given our listeners a special offer of three pounds of chicken breast, two pounds of burgers, and one pack of hot dogs for free. Right now, new members get this special deal when they sign up at butcherbox.com slash trivia. One more time, that's butcherbox.com slash trivia. Chicken breast, burgers, 
hot dogs in your first box. Go and sign up. You should have done that already. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And leave me some comments. Tell me what you think of it. When you got it, did you love it? What'd you make? Go ahead and comment. And then, well, now go watch the match. Hey, guys. Christian Harloff here. And look, it is not always easy when you're searching for an audio book. Uh, you're searching for a podcast. And sometimes when you're looking for a book, it takes longer scrolling thing, scrolling around looking for things and it does actually reading instead of standing in front of your bookshelf waiting for a title to jump out sign up for scribd scribd is awesome scribd when i first found out about it i started browsing around and i as i do i put in star wars and ken knapsack's book came up you pipe in what you're looking for and there's so many great options with Scribd, it's the world's most fascinating library, and it's just $9.99 a month. Explore all your interests in any format with millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more for less than a cost of a single book. You can easily switch between titles and genres and the formats right from the app. And you can discover must-read new works from celebrated authors like Roxanne Gay, Charles Yu, and more. And it's premiering exclusively on Scribd. And right now, Scribd is offering our listeners an exclusive 60-day trial. Head on over to try.scribd.com slash trivia for your free 60-day trial. One more time. That is try.scribd.com slash trivia and get that 60-day trial. The second you sign up, you get instant access to the entire library and you guys know how much I love Wired. Well, guess what Wired said about them? Wired said that it is the Netflix for books. I mean, right there. That tells you everything that you need to know about it. It's incredible. It's awesome. You'll love it. Sign up today. See, I like what you did before we went there. It's a killer promo because we started here. We have Mike Kalinowski, ah! and he's talking about everything leading up to it. Shannon Barney, obviously very vocal, going after Chandru. Chandru, his game is very tight when it comes to IG, but what also makes him very dangerous is the fact he's able to get into the minds of his opponents. He's, be, he's able to go after him, whether it's social media, during the matches, whatever it might be. He knows. He doesn't care if you like him or not. I don't think that's what anybody understands. He does not care if you like him. He just wants to win, and that's why he's so great. Mike Kalinowski has been a great competitor for a long time. To watch these two clash right now, let's get it going. Let's get it going. Well, I'm not the guy that does that. That's your. I, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia smorehouse. Well done. Five rounds for the Inner Geekdom Championship of the World. Is the music for swag and you know, ready to go and what is Chandra going to do here coming in probably show us some moves I would you, imagine. you would assume he's got he's got a Conor McGregor thing he's got a Prince Nassim thing he's got this thing that just knows how to get the crowd hyped he knows and not in not in his favor but in general I, I would say he's like Makuga on a wedding dance floor he is he's just so good at his game overall and here it comes the challenger led to the ring oh and there and look that is the that is the challenger what is that outfit he's got going on he dyed his hair what is that outfit what is that he, what kind of dance is this that he's got going on it might be a wig and there's winston marshall in robin garb big and lots of booze and look at that he doesn't get look at the dances he's got going i mean look at these introducing first the challenger representing swag with a record of seven wins three defeats and three knockouts he is the former movie trivia shmoda inner geekdom champion of the world chandru the chosen Oh, he's literally eating a sandwich, being very casual with this match so far, although those dance moves next level. Next level. Yeah. All right. All right. So that. Uh, can I get the mic? Oh, yeah. Right. You can use that one if you want. Fine. You got to say something. Okay. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. You're putting a lot of punch into that farmer, Christian, and I'm gonna change that today. Wow. Two time, two time in a Geekdom Champion sounds so much better. So, so much better. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. You've been running away from me for so long. Well, the last two people who beat you, I did beat. Chance, Chance Ellison. <laughs> I just like demolished him at the spectacular. You see that? And so did Moose today. And Smets, who KO'd you, I took the belt away from him. So, also, I'm the only person to defend this Inner Geekdom Championship in the past three years. I'm not willing to share that with you. So, today what I'm gonna do is take that thick, thick belt away from you and it's gonna be sweet, sweet revenge. Kiss. I'm coming for that thick, thick belt. It is a thick belt, all right. It's thick! It's really, really thick! All right, thank you. Very thick. Uh, let me stop you right there. And there's the music for the champion. That's right, he probably heard a little bit of that speech and oh, said, sure Cue he did. my music, I'm ready to go. And there is the music for the three-time champion. Showdown champion Mike Kronowski, a legend of IG. You got to imagine you're going to see Chance Ellison here in this intro sure as well. You know. Shannon Barney, the queen of corruption. And there he is. So there is the Hello, champion there see? coming out with his manager, Shannon Barney, and the, his teammate, former team champion, Chance Ellison. There he is. And there is the champion. And a big round of applause for Mike Kronowski. Hey. And his opponent, representing corruption, with a record of 11 wins, 6 defeats, and 3 knockouts, he is the reigning, defending, undisputed, 3 times movie trivia showdown inner geekdom champion of the world Mike the killer Galanowski big round of applause for Mike it is a thick belt Richard there is no doubt about that and he's giving the crowd a nice look at that shiny belt as he prepares to defend it yes he is all right Mike Kalinowski and Chandru they have arrived and all right, so Mike, we're gonna go in. Do oh, I get something? Can I talk? Oh, sure, sure, sure. First of all, let me, I don't, you don't mind if I take this off. I know the people came to see my handsome face, so yeah, let's yeah, let them get it all in here. Sure. You know, uh, I mean, I, I, there's a quote that's been going in my head the past week, and I like to think of it as Have you ever seen a hater doing better than you? Because I haven't. <laughs> so, someone has been running their mouth. Quite a bit. And everyone's like, well, why isn't Kalinowski responding to this? Is he not going to say anything? Is he not taking it seriously? So I've got a couple bullet points that I would like to address, if I may. Please. One I noticed uh, was the, it started off right off the bat, and I knew this was going to happen. There was an insult lobbed at me because of my performance in the team's event where I lost the chance to be double belted for a second time uh, because of IG. And after that happened during that match, I went to my manager right away after it was over. I go, well, there's some ammunition for Chandru because he's going to say something about this end. Par for the course, that what was said. But my friend, you are so stupid. And let me tell, let me tell you why. Do you remember the last time I was double belted what happened? It was so I, long ago, I forgot. I imploded. I imploded. I lost both belts. I lost everything because I came in cocky as ever. I thought, you know, I could do no wrong. But then I lost those belts. So then I come in there. So what you should have been doing is you should have been praying that I was going to win that match. Praying so that I came in double belted, cocky, not thinking about studying, just enjoying the fruits of my labor. But what do you think I didn't go back and focus on IG over the past two months? That's because you're an idiot. Next, you had to take something that I did for a year, you know, just nice uh, reaching out to the people that inspired me and you know, I found admiration for, unfortunately, I'm sorry it wasn't you because you haven't done anything that's inspired me or it's admirable. You went and took a personal thing that I did. You couldn't come up with your own insults. You know, but those are fine. Those are fine. I had studying to do. But then, 
You did something that did piss me off, my friend. You did something. You went and attacked not only my brother, but my two sisters in inner geekdom, the legends of this league, that you went and attacked them. So my friend, I'm going to put this right here during the match because I'm going to look at them there the entire match. You went and messed up. Because number one, you, don't you ever say anything about me if you play one league. You sit here in one league on your little throne. You haven't done much yet. You won a championship. Sure. Hector Navarro won a championship. Robert Meyer Burnett won a championship. Big deal. You won one championship. I play. I play in three leagues. I do this in three leagues, and I play at top level in three leagues. So until, until you get behind this IG counter, you come into singles, you come in teams, then you can attack me in that. Until then, do not say a word about that. These people right here, Mara beat you, pal. Mara, you crumbled like like a wet handkerchief against Mara. Smets beat you. Smets beat you. And you haven't even been able to face Rachel. Dude, you have nothing to say against them. They built the league. But you went and attacked them. You done messed up, Chandru. You done messed up. Because now, and you, again, I'm not playing against you, Chandru. You're nothing to me. You're beneath me. It's like you're the kid on the playground that's hurling insults. I'm holding out my hand like this, and you're just <laughs> doing this at me. You're nothing to me. I'm here to play this game. So I'm going to say this, Chandru. We're going to say it right now. I wish I could walk over there. I wish I could, because I want to say this to your face. I hope you got it out. I hope you got the dancing out. The stupid faces. All the snide comments between the matches. Get it out because I want you to play the game. I've talked about respect and how you don't respect the game. You want to earn my respect today? Answer the questions. I'll answer the questions. And at the end of this, if you beat me, and you beat me fairly without any of the theatrics, and you just play the game, and you just answer the questions correctly, I'll give it to you. But until then, you don't have my respect. Let's play a match. Get it out now. Get, if you want to dance, do your dancing right now. Let's do it, pal. Let's get it out. I wasn't expecting a full-on presidential debate. I know we have a podium and everything, but like we're here to play trivia, pal. Um, I know you've been like doing a lot of catching lately and not much pitching. So just... just You'll have to explain that to me because I don't think I understand now. <laughs> that we should probably get to bad. the uh, okay. rules. So, I just, so with that... I just have one gift for you. A, a gift? Yes. What's that? I it know is. you like to suck on things, so after you lose, you can suck on my lollipop. All right, all right, here we go. Chandru. All right, all right ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Let, uh, let's. He's, he appears to have brought Size his own. Okay. Size does matter. Size does matter. He has a bigger lollipop than Chandru, and that is going to mean something to some people. All right, all right. Killer chance going out inside of the arena at the moment. All right. So, Mark. Our competitors have definitely arrived, and now we have the match about to begin. Let's go. Five rounds. What's round number one? Christian, like? I apologize. I had some bad tacos. I was in the bathroom for the last 15 minutes. What happened? Let's reshoot the whole thing. Or we can just go into the rules of round number one in this five round championship match. Round number one is a normal round number one. Ten questions from ten different corners of inner geekdom know how will be asked to the field of competition. As soon as we ask a question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to both managers, to the audience, to the cameras, and last but not least, to Christian and myself. Questions worth one point, no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule. Throughout the duration of the match, you're not sure you heard a question right, you need to use a repeat to get that correct answer, use your repeat. You also each have one challenge, you may utilize at any point throughout the five round match. We'll bring in managers, confirm and deliver it to our heart's content, and it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. Christian, I think we can finally play trivia. All right, ask the champion. Are you ready? You heard what I just said, right? Ask the challenger. I am ready to play. Ask the challenger. Are you ready? You know, psychologically speaking, vengeance. Didn't I say to get it out before the match oh. began? Then let's get ready to smoke Thank the good Lord for your powerful throat. Sir. All right, here we go. Round number one. Question number one. We're going to start with graphic novels. Josh Brolin, Dennis Haysbert, and Ray Liotta appear in which graphic novel adaptation? They're already writing. I'm not sure if it's an answer or more insults. Could be either one at this point. I hope it's just answers. I mean, that was nice, a nice, clean match. Hell of a pre-show. What I prayed for. And we got five, four. Three, two, one. Pens down. Mike Kalinowski? Sin City, a dame to kill for. Yes, Chandra. Sin City, a dame to kill for. 1-1. One, one. 
All right, let's see if you can have this next fastball in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars is the category and the question. In which film does C-3PO say, I want you to know you've been a real friend, R2, my best one, in fact. Just need the title of that movie, don't need to write the Star Wars of it. I really like these movies. I don't know if I told Five, you. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Chandra? Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And Mike? Rise of Skywalker. Yes. Nice. Tied at two. Spider-Man is the next category. Lucy Lawless, Sarah Ramirez, and Octavia Spencer have cameos in which Spider-Man film? Yeah, you said it right. Spider-Man. <laughs> it's not a last name. I've got a friend named Louis Spider-Man. Five. It'd be a cool one. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. And Mike? Spider-Man. Yes. And? Spider-Man. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Next question is in the world of animated movies. So movies drawn by hand or on a computer. And your question for a point. What is the name of the superhero killing battle robots created by Syndrome in The Incredibles? So right now we have a tie game between both Mike Kalinowski and Chandra. Who will strike first? Well, they both have struck three times. Well, against one another. Five. Ah, I see what you're doing. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. We start with Chandra. Omnidroid? Yes. And Mike? I trusted my gut like I'm told. I thought it was Omnibot, but it's Omnidroid. Yes, it is. Yep, yep. All right. Planet of the Apes is the next category. The ape, Dr. Milo, played by Sal Minio, appears in which film from the original Apes series? All right, I know technically we're not supposed to have like pet apes, but if I get one, I'm naming it Dr. Milo. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be, I'd be mad at you if you didn't. Or doctor, there, there's a number of doctors. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Mike Kalinowski. I just put battle, but is it battle of the planet of the apes? It is not. And Chandra. <laughs> Wait, that was not the joke answer? He was serious? No. Escape from the planet of the apes. Chandra goes up by one. Escape from the planet of the apes is correct. Chandra, as you said, strikes first. So we move to our next question. And that is in the category of the wizarding world of the kid who does stuff. And your question. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Harry and Ginny share their first kiss in what location within Hogwarts? So the challenger. Detention up. for both of them. Yeah, the challenger going up by one at the moment. Five to four. And Ten five, quarters. four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start with Chandra. That was both their requirements at the time? Room of requirement. Yes, and Mike. Room of requirement. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, question seven, swashbuckling adventure. In Dead Man Tell No Tales, how many years pass from the first time seeing 12-year-old Henry Turner sneaking around the Flying Dutchman to the first time we see him in the Royal Navy? Uh, did Harry have a smooth line when he got that smooch? Thank you. No? <laughs> I think that would have been apt. Oh, five. Four, Is that your line? <laughs> three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, and Mike. 18 years? It's incorrect. Chandra? 10 years. Incorrect. Looking oh! at nine. So nine Shush, years. you also got it wrong. Nine years. Relax, gentlemen. We're playing the game now. Your next nine. question. It was what, nine years? Nine, nine years. Nine years. Your next question is in the world of Transformers. More than meets the eye. And your query. The characters Ultra Magnus... Arky, Arcy, excuse me, and Cranix appear in which film? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start here with Chandra. The Transformers, the movie. That is correct, and Mike? The Transformers, the movie. Yes, there you go. <laughs> They're throwing thes in each other's faces. Yes. 
All right, Chandra up by one. No perfect round in there for either one. Here's question nine, mixed bag. In Back to the Future, after being caught by Strickland, Marty McFly now has how many tardies in a row? <laughs> I love this. Oh, finally. I knew the answer to something. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out if uh, both these guys What did that whiteboard do to you? Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. We start with Mike Kalinowski. Four times. Yes, sir. And Chandra. Four tidies in a row. Yes. All right. So, Chandra Dondapani holds his one point thus far going into the tenth question. It is 8-7. What's the next one? That's right. No perfect rounds eligible anymore thanks to that daggum Pirates franchise. So, your final question is in the world of Middle Earth. And it is. In the Hobbit films, which of the dwarves in Thorin's company is Dwaylin's brother? And just like that, Mark Ellis back on the missing train. Oh, that happened to me a long time ago. I got nothing. And five, four, three, two, one. Chandra. He be ballin'. Ballin'. Yes, that's correct. And Mike? Ballin. Yes. yes. Yep. All right. All right. So with, with that, Mike Kalinowski and Chandru end the round 9-8 with the challenger up by one going into the second round. It is the wheel round. It is. The wheel will emerge. It's a real physical wheel we have on hand because we love our studio audience just that much. Each competitor gets a spin at that our wheel. Once they settle on a category, five questions will emerge from that particular round. Questions worth two points unless you need multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. So with all of that in mind, remember that stealing is available. Chandru Dandapani has a one-point lead over Mike Kalinowski. Chosen, would you like to spin first or defer to Killer? Oh, Mike, you like to go first, don't you? I'm sorry, I'm going first. Okay, he's going to spin. Not sorry. Wait, what? Did something happen? <laughs> Chandra, Chandra's going to go first. Chandra's going to go first. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's what I want to came here to do, is watch you guys yeah. play the game. All right, here we go. So Chandra will be spinning first, and here we go. What? All right, Chandra, the challenger, Chandra, the chosen, who is going to be spinning the wheel. Go ahead, Chandra. This one I can spin from the pegs, right? Yes, you can, but you really don't need to give it a uh, whole right. lot of cost. I love pegging. Okay. Uh, that, okay, all right. We'll be here a minute. All right. Chandra sealing his... No, 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 it's fine. But I'm just saying, we're all going to be here a while now. Yeah, I was going to say, you might want to burn some, some energy off. They don't even like the dance move. No. He's not. He, all right. And round and round it goes. It is starting to settle. It is starting to decide a category. No spinners in opponent's choice today. Nope. Mike took it off. He's the champion. At his, it's his looking like it could be X-Men. X-Men is the spin. Do you want to keep it or spin again? You have 60 seconds to decide with your superhero manager. You have 60 seconds to comply. Like Robocop. Yeah, it's right. really nice. Yeah. Oh, we just gave that away. Yep. Paul Verhoeven directed it. <laughs> the Ronnie, car was the 6000 SUX. Ronnie Cox. We're sticking with it. Okay. They're going to stick with X-Men. All right. All right. X-Men it is. All right. Chandru, you have chosen to stick with X-Men. And here we go. Here's your first question out of five. In X-Men, Days of Future Past. How many semesters was Xavier's school open before it had to close due to the Vietnam War? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, two semesters, B, three semesters, C, one semester, D, five semesters? Two semesters. It's incorrect. Mike, in X-Men, Days of Future Past, how many semesters was Xavier's school open before it had to close due to the Vietnam War? Is it A, two semesters, B, three semesters, C, one semester, D, five semesters? Five, four. Three semesters? 
Looking for one semester. Just one. One. Just the one, so no <laughs> points exchanged. Chandra retains a one-point lead. Here's question two. Question two. In X2, the film begins with a tour of the White House and a quote attributed to which president? Five, four, three. Abraham Lincoln. For two points. There it is. There One of the more quotable presidents, number 16. What is the name of the actor who plays Dopiner, D-O-P-I-N-E-R, the taxi driver in Deadpool and Deadpool 2? That'd be my boy, Karan Sony. That's correct. Yes, sir. Two more points, and he's taking a five-point lead. All right, that is question three. Here's question four. In X-Men Apocalypse, what are Apocalypse's last words? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. Is it A, it is done, B, it is finished, C, all is seen, D, all is revealed? Five, four, three. All is revealed. For one more point. That's a big get. Don't know if he knew it when he heard it or he guessed it, but he got the point either way. Six point lead, one question left in X-Men. Here it is. What is the name of the team Sebastian Shaw leads in X-Men First Class? Five. Four, three. The Hellfire Club. That is correct for two more points. Big round for Chandra. Yeah. Nice round. He navigated yeah. through it. He took his time. He had to go to multiple and got one point, and Mike didn't capitalize on one of the steals. So it's 16-8. Depending on Mike's spin, he could either get himself in a good position here depending on what he spins. That's right. We're going to see that right now. All right. All right, here we go. So now the champion is at the wheel. Mike, when you're ready, give it a spin. Yeah, just a nice little love tap. Mike has had pretty good luck with the wheel. Yeah, he career. knows how to spin it. He did not spin from the pegs. Interesting maneuver. He was the first person to ever spin the new wheel that we got the, the first really? wheel. Really? Yeah, back in season four, I believe it was. I thought you were going to say he was the first person that ever broke a wheel. No, that was Stacy Howard. That was Stacy Howard. <laughs> so what? You know Mike's probably looking at DC on that wheel. There's a lot of and categories it around. It's Alski's coming around, like. but it's going to go past DC, it looks like. Uh, it looks don't worry, like. it could come around again. And it's going to land on. I told you it could come around again. It might. It might. And oh, it, oh, we're going nice to be spin. here all night. Yeah. You got a free, free two spins here. Free two spins. Excellent. All right. Free two spins. There it goes. So Mike Kalinowski, obviously, has been looking for DC. Yep. That's going to be the one that he's going to be. That's going to be his money slice if he's able to hit that. You think he could probably do pretty well in uh, Marvel movies? I mean, a lot of them. He is the Inner Geekdom champion, yeah. but you know that if he wants to try to catch up to that eight points. He did break down Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice on the celebrated podcast. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Nice. How is that show? Great never, listen. Never been on it. Uh, they should ask you sometime. Here it comes, and it's looking like it could be. If it's X-Men again, I'm leaving. Animated, animated inner geekdom. Animated inner geekdom. Mike, he's thinking about this. He's got 60 seconds to decide. Yeah. This is one of those critical decisions that you're always going to look back and second guess, regardless it's, of how it goes. Well, the question is, how, long, how well do you know these animated films? If, if you know them well enough, you try to stick with it, you, you, t you make the move. But if you're even that hesitant. You can't go with it. We'll take one more crack at that we'll one. One more there spin. Go. There you go. Or maybe two or maybe three. All right. All right. Here's yeah, the spin. We'll so now whatever get. Mike gets here, unless of course it lands on X-Men. X-Men. Yeah. Ronnie X-Men. Good <laughs> buddy of mine from <laughs> Holy Cross High School. Oh yeah, Billy X-Men. Round and round it goes. When it stops. We really actually don't know. We'll be dead. Yes. All right. And it's coming back around here. So, you know, once again, Mike is looking for that DC slice. And should it hit it? We were and, so and young there, when Mike spun this wheel. Look at this. <laughs> and we get to spin it again. I mean, you ain't got no more X-Men questions? <laughs> Take it off. 
All right. That was his hardest spin yet, Christian. He just, the guy just wants more FaceTime, I think, at this point. <laughs> Round and round it goes, and uh, if anyone has any last words as to... I'm going to do my last will and testament now that I think about it. Is it dealer's choice if it lands on X-Men again? I you guys we're, just <laughs> we're leaving. Yeah, that was... <laughs> it's not going to be X-Men, Christian! The Wizard and oh, Comic Book comic Movies! Book movies. <laughs> comic Book Movies it, it is. is. All right. All right. <laughs> Took us a while, but we got there. That poor, poor wheel. Comic book movies. All right. Here we go, Mike. So you're going to get five questions. Comic book movies. Mark, what's first? All right, Mike. When you first spun the wheel, I was a man of 20 years of age. <laughs> now we find ourselves some decades later, and you are faced with comic book movies. Five questions, each one worth two points, unless you need multiple choice. Your first one. Who plays the lead role of Clay in the film The Losers? Well, that would be the man that plays Thomas Wayne in Batman vs. Superman, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Mike Kalinowski down by six. That's right. Your next question for two more points. In The Mask, what is the name of the city that Stanley Ipkiss lives in? It's funny because in Son of Mask, he lives in Fringe City, and it was a play on words for in Mask, it's Edge City. Thank you for the info. You are correct for two more points. Is he filibustering? All right. Your third question of five. So you currently trail by four. Which Marvel film features supporting performances from Christopher Lambert and Johnny Whitworth? He plays that terrible thunk Methodius in Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. I think he won a couple Oscars. Two points. So Mike's got an opportunity here with his fourth question to tie it. He can tie the lead with his penultimate question in the world of comic book movies, and it is, which actress plays Martha Wayne in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice? <laughs> Lauren Cohen. Did they just get Walking Dead people to do all the... That's correct, <laughs> for two points. And all of a sudden, we are now tied. Killer, chosen, deadlocked at 16 apiece to possibly break the tie before we head into round three of the betting round. Mike Kalinowski has one more question in the realm of comic book movies, and it is. For the possibility of two more points. Who plays Jason Wynn, who has developed a biological weapon called Heat 16 in Spawn? That's the man that had that terrible line of, you have a moral obligation to do what's right. That is Mr. Martin Sheen. That sounds like a nice thing to say. That is correct for two points. Mike Kalinowski now has a two-point lead as we head into round three of the betting round. Kalinowski up by two, up by two as we get into the third round. It is the betting round. All right, and Mark, how's it go? Betting round works as thus. The wheel comes back for one more legendary and probably lengthy spin. Once we settle on a category, there's going to be one question asked to the field of competition. But before we ask the question, Mike and Chandru are going to take a look at that category and decide how many points they're comfortable wagering. They can bet up to three points. They don't have to bet any points should they not wish to. Keep in mind, if you get the question correct, you gain that many points. If you miss the ensuing question, you lose that many points. So bet, but bet wisely. All right, Mike, you are currently in the lead by two, so you get to spin that wheel. I hate to say this one more time. I wish you guys put the camera on this side. This is my good side. Actually, I don't have a bad side. There it is. There it is. All right. Mike spins the wheel. And Winston Marshall has time to actually go fight crime and come back. Oh, no, Winston pulled a groin, jumping over the bar. <laughs> oh, no, Robin's down. Robin is down. It's real spun so long. Chandra and Mike are friends now. <laughs> I don't know if it's spun quite that long. You got so many kind of question marks on that wheel, like the alien predator we rarely hear from in round two. Well, you might have just put it there. Yeah. 
There it is. Jurassic Park playing a very entertaining factor in Perry Nemiroff and Ben Bateman's match. Filmed right here at the Cantina. It is DC, DC Films. DC, DC Movies Films. it is. And so what we need now, gentlemen, you can confer with your manager for up to 30 seconds. We do need you to write down how many points you're wagering. Very interesting. Okay, so Mike Kalinowski now has the right to place his wager and show it to just us first. Go ahead. Thank Got you, it. sir. And Chandra. Got All it. right, thank you. All right. Gentlemen, here is your question. In the world of DC, which film has the line? You can have it all. You just have to want it. Uh, it's not entirely true. You gotta like work for it. Yeah. All right. Mike seems to very loud it. slam by Mike. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Mike, how many points? I bet three points. You said. You just have to want it! Wonder Woman 84! And Chandra, how many points? I bet two points. And you said? Wonder Woman 1980. Both correct. All right. All right. Mike is up by three. Mike's up by three now after that one. So now, after round number three, the champion with a three-point lead. It's 21-18 going into the deadly speed round. The buzzers are coming out, folks. And each competitor hopes to hit it first, and they get a very quick, correct answer. That's why we call it the speed round. Lightning round. Five questions total in this round. Both competitors have a shot to answer the question as soon as it is read from Christian Harloff. But to do that, they buzz in. They're going to have a buzzer. Once they hit the buzzer and I address them by their first name, they will have exactly two seconds to say the correct answer. If they get the question wrong, they lose a point. If they get the question correct but not within the two-second window, they still lose a point. If they get the question correct within the two-second window, they will gain a point. Again, five questions total. Competitors are allowed to interrupt Christian. No offense to you. They're allowed to interrupt if they think they know the answer before you finish reading the question. All right, here we go, guys. What year saw the release of the following films? Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Mike. 1995. Yes. <laughs> question two. James Tolkien plays the character Marshall Strickland. Uh, two movies. Back to the Future. That's incorrect. Back to the Future Part 3. Marshall Strickland in what 1990 film? Question 3. In what film will you hear the line, it's the so-called normal guys who always let you down. Sickos never... Tender. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, no, no. no. Back because of Batman that. Returns. Yeah. Question 4. Mm -hmm. Which film features the following characters? Captain America, War Machine... Loki, Peggy Carter, and Edwin Jarvis. Mike. Endgame. Yes. That's correct. Your final speed round question is now upon you. All right, here it is. Nicolas Cage was in two superhero films in 2018. One was Spider-Man Into the... S Mike. Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Yes. Yeah. Mike Kalinowski with a thrilling speed round. He gains three points and Chandra loses two points. And so it's a big swing. And now we are all of a sudden looking at a nine point ball game. It is 24 to 16, excuse me, an eight point ball eight game. Point. 24 for Mike, 16 for Chandra. And that's how quickly the speed round can change things. However, we still have round five to go where 10 points are available for each competitor without the threat of losing any. All right, Mike Kalinowski is up by eight going into the fifth and final round, the championship round. Belts are on the line. It is a fever pitch here in the studio audience at the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Round number five works as thus. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers may range from 1 to 16. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent. Each integer corresponds to a unique category of movie, trivia, schmodown, inner geekdom know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. Your final question is worth five big, possibly belt-impending points. And Mike Kalinowski, with an eight-point advantage going into the final round, has the luxury of giving us his three lucky numbers first. Mike, from 1 to 16, which three numerals feel destined? Uh, 3, 14, and 17. Uh, 3, 14. Can't do 17. Oh, I'm sorry. 3, 14, and 6. Three, that 14 you can and do six. 6. Thank you. All right, and Chandra? Uh, 2 for the 2 Suicide Squad movies, 12 for the 12 Batman movies, and 
nine just guys. Okay. There's you know been why. 12 Batman movies. All right. 12. You were in some, Winston. Two, 12, and nine for the challenger who will be going first. Two, 12, and nine. He's got a mountain to climb, Christian, but if there's anyone that can do it, it's probably somebody named The Chosen. All right. Two for Chandru. Chandru, for your two point question, right back to X Men once again. All right. X Men, here it is for your two point question. Chandru, in the realm of X-Men, in the extended cut of Days of Future Past, who must the mutants rescue from the Sentinels in the future who is being held captive in Cerebro? Rogue. Yes, for two points. That's correct. He still could have gotten out of this round without hitting that one potentially, but now it's a six-point ball game. He's got to have his three and his five. All right, so he's going to go with category 12, category 12, and that takes him back to the future. Back to the future here for Chandru on a three-point question. Chandru, in Back to the Future Part 2, Old Marty is goaded into participating in an illegal scam by a co-worker leading to his termination. What was the co-worker's name? You want just the last name, right? Just the name of the character. Five, four, three. Douglas Needles. That is correct for three points. There it is. Needles, his first name is Douglas, and now it is that time for a five-pointer that Chandra's got to have. If he hits it, he's going to force Mike to answer some questions and avoid the TKO. If he misses, Mike Kalinowski gets to keep that shiny belt around his waist slash shoulder. That's right. It would be a TKO if he misses, but if he hits it, Mike's got to start answering some questions. Chandra, for your five-point question, you chose category nine, and that puts you in the realm of comic book movies. Here is your question. Comic book movies. And I have all my three repeats ready. You do? Right? Yeah. Chandru, what 2010s film opens with the line, America is a eradicated... Or, yeah, that's, that's a terrible reading of that line, sorry. What 2010s film opens with the line, America is an irritated... Ir irradiated. irradiated. I can't say I it. My eyes are bad. Thank you. Irradiated <laughs> wasteland. Within it lies a city. Outside the boundary walls, a desert, a cursed earth. Five, four, three. Repeat. Two, damn you. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. What 2010 film opens with the line, America is... And irradi irradi irradiated. irradiated. Thank you. Irradiated wasteland. I can't get it out. Irradiated wasteland. Within it lies a city. Outside the boundary walls, a desert, a cursed earth. Five, four. I just want three, to hear you read it two, again. <laughs> Repeat. <one. laughs> Maybe the most villainous thing Chandra's ever done. Forcing my partner. Here we go. What? What? All right. Let's, what? let's what? relax. Let's let him hear what the question. What 2010s film opens with the line, America is an irradiated <laughs> wasteland. Within it lies a city. Outside the boundary waste, a desert, a cursed earth. Five. Should I do one more time? Four. Three. <laughs> Repeat. <two. laughs> gotcha. I don't know if he knows the answer. I don't know. We'll find out in a second. What 2010s film opens with the line? America is an irradiated wasteland. <laughs> with it lies a city. Outside the boundary walls, a desert, a cursed earth. Five. Four, three. I'd be dread. Oh, he knew it. He knew it the whole time. <laughs> How do you cheer that? He got you. All right. So, oh, man. Chandru, 
Chandru the villain does exactly what Chandru the villain <laughs> does, but he does, but he also does what the great Chandru does, and he gets a, all those points and gets away from a TKO, and it is 26-24, and now the champion has to start answering some questions. All right, so Mike Kalinowski, he chose category three. Category three, Mark. And Christian, that corresponds to the world of who said it. World of who said it for Mike Kalinowski to tie the game. These are quotes from movies in the realm of inner geekdom for two points and the tie. Which character says the line, what we some kind of suicide squad? You want the character, right? You said it's um, five. Deadshot. We would have accepted either, to be honest with you. That's correct for two points. All right, so the my two point lead has vanished, and now it is a tied ball game. So Mike Kalinowski has tied the game. If he wins, if he gets this, he wins with his three point question, and he will be the third person to defend the IG title Four. once. If not, he has to try to answer his five-point question. Mike, you chose category 14. And that corresponds to a world featuring a lot of really, really cool dinosaurs, Jurassic Park. Yes. <laughs> and Mike, your question. For three points and the win to keep the belt, the League of Inner Geekdom. Who plays Karen Mitchell, Claire's sister, in Jurassic World? Five, four. You know what? Give me all three. of my three repeats right now, please. <laughs> okay, JT, roll one, two, and three. Your question for 15 more seconds. Who plays Karen Mitchell, Claire's sister, in Jurassic World? Chandra, don't worry, it's gonna be over real soon. Remember saying that to my partner, Chance? Remember that? Five, four, and it's Matt. Three, sucks, two. You got my repeats, right? One, oh, you know what the hell with it? Judy Greer. And yeah! Said it, joining Chandru and Jason Inman, and so the rivals are linked yet again in the world of inner geekdom. What a performance by Mike and Christian! One of the best speed rounds we've ever seen in inner geekdom. It was great, and Chandru was trying to catch up. Chandru was trying to catch up and do whatever he, he could. Started to press a little bit he in went, round four. He, he went a little too fast in that speed round, and he was trying to catch up. Mike made him pay for it. Mike is the champ, and now Mike goes on to play Amadou Moses in that title match. So there you go. All right, and Shannon has now opened up the beard tap. Mike has his lollipop, not Chandra's lollipop, and he's holding a picture of his dear friend. What a match filled with all the drama, hype, hoop, all you could possibly want. And the actual trivia competition lived up to it. What a match between Mike Kalinowski, the killer, and Chandru Donapandi, the chosen. They put on a show. That's exactly what they, was, they were going to do, and they absolutely did. And Chandru fought from start to finish, and he did not go out quietly into the night. He got all those questions back. He fought back. He was down eight points, and he came back and forced Mike to hit the three to win and keep the title. But Mike Kalinowski does what he wanted to do, and that's defend the title. Mike had never done that yet. He just did that, and now he's in that company with Chandru, with Jason Inman, and now he's got an opportunity to be the first one to win, to defend twice should he defeat Amaru Moses. An amazing display of movie trivia, inner geekdom know-how. One could say Mike Kalinowski irradiated the competition here today, and now we turn it over to Jillian Marie for an exclusive interview with Corruption, the winner. 
today's Inner Geekdom Championship, Mike Kalinowski with his trusty belt and his trusty manager, Shannon, the Queen of Corruption, Barney. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Chance Ellison, Shannon Barney, and you're reigning, and I'm going to enunciate this, defending Inner Geekdom <laughs> Champion, Mike the Killer Kalinowski. Mike, you're a three-time three Inner Geekdom Champion. This is your first time defending. How does that feel? Well, you know, when I left the house today, uh, my dog's, of course, looking at me lovingly as I leave the house. I take the belt from the place where it is in my house, and I walk out the door, and I've always thought, I never come home with the belt. Every time I've had to walk into a match, I don't return with it. And I've, I've defended it. The one thing, you know, people always say that, yeah, he's, he's five-time champion, but he's never defended, he's never defended. I did it. I did that. And you know, hey, hey, there, there, will, there will always be the Reddit threads, and you know who you are. Well, he only defended it once, he's gotta do it again. It's white noise, because I will do it again, because, you know, that's, I've proven that I can defend it now. That's the thing. I've proven I can defend it. Uh, you know, I feel great. I, feel, I mean, it happened. I did it. I did it. You certainly did. And Shannon, you just have to feel so proud about my card now. God, you took the words right out of my mouth because I wanted to reiterate. As a matter of fact, let me reiterate that one more time for you idiots at home. We're standing in the presence of the only three-time Inner Geekdom Champion of the world, the reigning Inner Geekdom Champion of the world, and the defending Champion Woo! of the world. So I don't want to hear another word about it ever again. Now, you've definitely had some bad blood with Chong Drew, and we got a little bit of a roast for, of him this morning. You came out here having some words. What are your thoughts on all that? How do you feel about Chong Drew? Well, you know, I like to think of myself as, you know, I love DC, I'm Batman, Batman always has to deal with the clown. You know, I put him in his place, you know, and he answered questions, he answered tough questions, so like I said at the beginning of the match, I wanted the theatrics out of the way, I wanted him to answer questions. I mean, let's be honest, he needs to work on that speed round a little bit, I mean, oof, has, they've never missed two of them like that, but I, that, I, I digress, you know. I don't want, you know, let's, let's not talk about Chandra, that is now in the past. He mouthed off, I came and I did what I did, and I won, so we move on beyond Chandra. And we do have a match against Amaru Moses coming up. Can we talk about that for a bit? Amaru, uh, yeah, I've watched his matches. Uh, I'm gonna use a quote from Frank Grillo who plays Crossbones in Winter Soldier. <laughs> You're out of your depth, kid. <laughs> Chance, how do you feel about your teammate retaining the IG belt? Oh man, I'm, I'm ecstatic, my boy Mike right here. Let me say something about Chance because this is why I've got the best partner in the league because there was a question in round one, the tardy question. When we, he gave that to me and I said three and he told me four. So we studied on that this week. I would not have gotten that right. It wouldn't have mattered because I had so many points going into the final <laughs> round. But still, it's nice. It is nice because I know there's people out there like Frank Janish who like their numbers. So Frank, does this do anything for my numbers now with my stats? You and your numbers, does that do anything? Probably not. He'll always, he'll always vote against me, even going against Amaru, a new guy. I'm still going to be like, well, 87% uh, probability that Kalinowski will drop the ball in a three-rounder, so I give this match to Amaru. Okay, I digress. Speaking of your partner, Chance, he does have a match tonight against JTE, that pay-per-view. Any thoughts for him before this match? Let me tell you something. There is no player in this league that deserves a title, a championship single title like this man right here. The way he's played over three years, this kid is on fire. He's reached, we talked about this. I talked about this with Ben Bateman. Now, Ben and I like to dig at each other. I don't know if you know that there's a little, you know, digs back and forth, it's all in jest. We talked about this. There's certain times where players get heat on them and they become invincible. Chance right now has that heat. He is becoming, it's just an aura that a player has when they enter the ring. Everyone feels it, he's got it. It is his time, he's getting the singles, but he's gonna be a singles champion by the end of this year, I guarantee you. Encouraging words by Mike Kalinowski. Well, Mike, congratulations on defending that IG title. Corruption, you're killing it right now. Here's to what's happening next. Can I just say one last thing? Of course. Of course I can, thank you. You're welcome. Chandru and Winston, in the infamous words of the late, great DMX, top is cheap, mother! <laughs> Back to you guys. All right, obviously Mike Kalinowski, very happy there. He does defend the title against Chandru, the Chosen. What a main event it was, and the bad blood was real, and you could tell how emotional it was for Mike Kalinowski. When he's out there, he embraces it, puts honor towards both Rachel Cushing and Mark Hanapa, Kevin Smets, 
and does the deed that he said he was going to do, and he goes on to play Amaru Moses. Obviously throwing out the chance Elton has that big match tonight against JTE. But then he just said on and off, let's just move forward here and let's get to the next match. That's right. Words that Kevin Smets himself was involved in. Mike said that, and then he got the correct answer in the nick of time using all his JTE <laughs> rules in one, which I've never really heard of before. But, hey, what the heck? It's a championship match, and he keeps the belt. On the other side of the equation, Christian, your team swag right now. Are you reeling? Are you still confident? You just had a little speed bump here today. How are you feeling if you're his opponent? Yeah, it's true. I mean, look, there's, Mike Kalinowski has proven that he is – if not the greatest intergeekdom player that we've ever seen. He's, he's a three-time champion. He has now defended it. Only Inman and Chandra have done that. And Mike's the only one out of those three who's been a champion, not two, but three times. So if Mike Kalinowski can go on, go on and defend against Amaru Moses and go on to the spectacular again into the uh, spectacular six downtown Los Angeles, he's going to, I don't know, he's just going to keep adding points to his legacy. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question. If your team's swag now, oh. how do you feel about it? <laughs> Look, <laughs> er, er, eradicated. You know what? Why don't we throw it back to Jillian Marie, who has an interview with Team Swag. They could probably answer the question better than you could. It's been a long day. <laughs> What's going on? I'm here with Chundru Dondapani and Winston Marshall. Chundru, tough loss tonight. Do you think any of that bad blood and that drama that happened going on backstage, that you oh, think that had anything come to... Come on, come on, come on. Jill, Jill, the corruption shill. You can stop this, all right? I can sense the, all this undertone of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just... Are you guys here because you wanted to see Mike win? Or you're here to... Or were you here to see me lose? I sold this place out. You're welcome. I gave you the time of your life. Okay, that came out wrong. I put on the best show this Moran has ever seen, and I'm proud of that. And, yeah, you, you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, you think you would have learned to not go after people that aren't current competitors, but I guess we haven't learned anything yet. Um, but, so, so, that, so that buzzer round, this is your first time playing with the live buzzers. Did you practice that? What what happened? I feel like that's really when things started to begin unraveling for you. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Love you, Jill. Uh, yeah, we practice it. It is what it is. I mean, look, I what I noticed is anytime you change formats, people have a tendency to need a minute to transition. I give Mike credit. Mike has done this a million times and errors before with it. So there was an experience curve that we were going to have to deal with. But it is what it is. We're not worried about it. We played an excellent match. I mean, look, when you get the categories that you want, you roll. When you get the categories that you like, but they don't always play your way, it happens. But it's all good because you saw what my boy did. Put anybody else up against him. I, I dare you. I double dog dare you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, a little disappointed in myself because like, I know the Twitter and the Reddit and the Facebook. And like, oh, Chandra's bad at the speed round because he's not good at the he's not good in person. He's not, he's only can be, only play the digital, whatever, whatever. But <laughs> I just, I just pushed him to his three. I'm just, I'm, I'm just disappointed in myself because I didn't push his, uh, push him to his five because like I know how Mike is bad at five pointers even in the geek team. He would have just like crumbled under the pressure. And Judy Greer, come on, that's a three pointer, Christian. Irradiated. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> yeah. I'm extremely proud of what I've done. Like, I'm, I'm still five for five on five pointers. No one else, no, no one else can say that. I, I've, I'm, I've played, played a hell of a game today. I'm extremely proud of that, that as well. So, I've, I've learned a lot today. And most of it is just do what I do because I'm the best at doing that. Thank you for giving this back to me. Um, I do, I do like that confidence. Um, but I will, I'll give a little IG ism here. Voldemort survives off unicorn blood. Is hatred and drama your unicorn blood? Is that just what you survive off of when it comes to the Schmodown? All of these, all of these blood rituals and all of this sacred stuff, I leave to the cult that is corruption. I just study and. Uh, what, what, what? Okay. Drip, drip. <laughs> yeah, and. I'm not done with this league yet. I'm not done with this season yet. You're gonna see me when you least expect it. And before I get my mic taken away again, let's get you back to the desk. <laughs> All right, so John Drew the Chosen, uh, he, when you see that guy and you look, 
yes, he might be a sore loser, but you cannot doubt this kid is a showman. You look at what he did when he came out today. He's not wrong. The majority of people that came here, yeah, sure, there are probably a lot of Mike Kalinowski fans in there, but they also came to see Chandru lose. And Chandru knows that, and he likes to push the buttons, and he did exactly that. But today, his talk didn't back up the walk. He's a hell of a performer, a hell of a talker, as we know. He's got some great dance moves, but he's also one great trivia player, and he just irradiates confidence. And even in a loss, I still think that he doesn't doubt himself. He looks in the mirror, he still sees the guy who's capable of recapturing the belt. And I feel like Winston Marshall has that same degree of confidence in him. Swag looking to make a push as we start getting towards the end yeah. of this Season 8 war. And, I mean, you, you talk about the nickname for Season 8. We saw a little bit of that here today. Look, this is a big day altogether for corruption because it is eight points for them today with this defense. If Chance Ellison can beat JTE tonight. Couple hours. That's four more points, and that's 12 points to corruption if that can happen. That is a massive, massive victory if that goes down. It's going to be pretty huge tonight. Check it out on pay-per-view. If you're a member of our Patreon, $10 and above tier, you already are going to be checking out that match, and it's going to be us two along for the ride with you. Speaking of the ride, we are taking it on the road. We are going to New York City. <laughs> Got a live Schmodown event Saturday, October 9th. Get your tickets to the Schmodown Live. Dot com And, you know, if I'm in a new city, I like to do a little bit of stand-up Thursday and Friday. You're going to be joining me for at least one of those dates. You can get tickets at markellis.live for New York Comedy Club. Cannot wait to get back to the Apple and tell some fresh jokes. Absolutely. And then the Spectacular, which is going to be December 4th. Either Mike Kalinowski or Amadur Moses will be defending that IG title with all the other titles. Maybe another special match. We'll see that there's going to be so much happening downtown that? L.A. That's at the Globe, ah. December 4th, the SchmodownLive.com. I love the Globe because you and I get to sit up in the rafters in yep. the little balcony like we're the two Muppets, Waldorf yep. and Statler, and yep. that's how the world views us. So why not? The SchmodownLive.com is where to go. And if you're in Hollywood, why not check out the Scum and Villainy Cantina? Thank you once again for hosting us. We enjoyed it. The fans seem to have loved it, and they have some libations and some great food. As lovely parting gifts. Fun one to call with you, partner. Absolutely. Thank you to our wonderful crew here today, making all the magic happen. Give it up for the crew one time. Yes. Let them hear it. And give it up for yourselves. Thank you guys so hey, very much for joining us. Audience. For Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. See you next time.